Let's review a Rico Thunderbolt dock. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Orico has sent me this dock for review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. This is their TB3S2 Thunderbolt dock. Now, from the look of this, you may think it is another Thunderbolt 3 dock, very similar to other manufacturers out there. In a sense, it's true because you have ports on the very front and also ports on the very back. But what makes this dock unique compared to all the other options on the market is that on the bottom, there is an opening. And you can open this cavity up, put in two M.2 SSDs on the inside. There are some caveats to this, which we're going to talk about this later on. However, I want to talk about what is included in the package first, should you buy this dock. Obviously, you get the dock itself, which is made out of very nice CNC aluminum. These are all the grooves that you get on the very top, which can be somewhat of a dust magnet down the road but nonetheless it is a great dock and it does a really great job dissipating heat from a dock because I know that most of the time when you have a Thunderbolt 3 dock they do run hot. It has an external power supply and that's what it looks like. Most of these docks have external power supply anyway the one that has all these capabilities and this many ports on the inside. You get a screwdriver to open the dock up should you not have one of your own already. You get the thermal pad to put on the M.2 SSDs and also a Thunderbolt 3 cable which uses a USB Type-C connection as you see there. The only caveat to this is that it's only about 30 centimeters, 12 inches or 1 foot long. So not the longest cable, however it is made out of braided material. It is a very thick and great quality cable and so far I've been testing this cable with the computer. It works just fine without any problems whatsoever. All right, let's talk about the ports on this dock that you get. So you do get quite a few. For example, there are a few USB type A's and USB type C, but let's first talk about the two USB type A. These are five gigabits per second USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. So pretty much these are for like slower devices. Samsung T5 would work just fine these ports. If you have anything that are faster, for instance, like faster SSD, NVMe, external drive or something, you want to plug them into one of these two ports instead like this. USB type A one or the other one right here that is USB type C. These are 10 gigabits per second port. They're USB 3.1 Gen 2. And you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack port. On the back, what you get is a socket to plug in the power adapter. Next to it, you get a gigabit ethernet connection. This is gonna work really well for a laptop. You have two USB type C connection. These are not just USB type C in a sense of word. These are the Thunderbolt ports on this one. This is a Thunderbolt port uplink that you would link to your system. This is a PD charger port, but it can also work as a Thunderbolt port as well. So for instance, you can do display daisy chaining on this and it will work just fine. It will also provide 60 watt of power to any device that's linked up to it that can use it. And lastly, you have a full display port that can output 8K at 60 Hertz, which are really awesome. So that's pretty much the ports and connection on this dock. And I have tested this linking up to multiple display using display port and also the Thunderbolt, it works out really well. One cable will supply signal to two displays. Something to note is that you can't run two displays at 8K 60 Hertz. So obviously if you're linking two display up, you are going to drop down in the capability of it. And I believe that drop down, it's coming down to around 4K at like 60 Hertz on both of the display to which I think that is still really good. And it's the de facto standard right now. Okay, so let's open the dock up and talk about the two M.2 SSD slot in this dock. I am not using the included screwdriver because I have my own iFixit screwdriver that I use. I do a lot of these work, so it makes sense for me to own this kit. And what we're going to do is pop that cover off. And there we have it. Two slots for M.2 SSDs and you have that cover. Now, the nice thing about using this in general is that you don't have to just secure down your NVMe SSDs on the inside, what you can do is just pretty much put this on and the moment you screw the cover on, it will also hold the SSD in place too. Now what I have is a Samsung 970 EVO Plus. This is a two terabyte module. I already have a heat sink on there or a thermal heat pad rather. So what I'm gonna do is just put this onto the bottom slot just like so. And as I mentioned before, I don't have to put in any extra screws. These are 2280s, so these are the standard length, kind of like what you would mostly see out there. Now, the inner port, you may wonder how come I'm not putting in an NVMe SSD and running it dual? And that is because this is not an NVMe type connection. This is the NGFF type connection, which is the type connection that comes just right before the NVMe. It's called the next generation form factor. I don't have any of those in my studios. If you have that, you can certainly do it. 
I personally would like to see this dock as a dual NVMe, and I did have a conversation with Orico about it. They mentioned that this is a compromise they have come with to expand the dock usability, not just only for the current generation that was out there, but also the NGFF one because some people have those. The other thing is that they were talking about the bandwidth on the dock itself and Thunderbolt 3, that when you really plug multiple peripherals into this device, displays, sound, USB drive and everything, you're really starting to subdivide the bandwidth from the NVMe SSDs. And that's the reason why they decided not to do two. So, okay, I can see that. And I could understand their compromise still. I want to have a dual NVMe SSD slot on the inside, but that's just some caveat to note about this. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that there is a fan on inside. And currently this is a earlier production model. I mentioned this to them that the fan is fairly loud and the pitch is fairly high, you'll hear the fan running for sure. What they have done and what they have told me is that in the current production one, they have changed the fan so that it's not quite as loud and the pitch is not as high. So I haven't tested those one out, but these are conversations I have with them that I want to share with you guys. So what I'm gonna do is put this M.2 NVMe on the inside right now, and I'm simply gonna put this cover on and just screw it back in. And pretty much just like that, I can secure the NVMe down without having to use any extra screws or anything like that. I think this is a pretty convenient design what they have done. It works out fairly well. And what we're gonna do is plug this into my Mac Studio to test this out. Now this dock can be used with a Mac Studio or any current Mac for that matter, especially if you want to expand the capability of your machine, the connection type. But if you have the Mac Studio already, this dock may not necessarily be the best thing to do unless you want to have this as a side to expand a port or something like that and have more USB-A, more USB-C port. This would make sense. But otherwise, I mean, I would say for a desktop machine, you have enough ports on there already. If you have, for instance, a 14, 16 inch MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, all these M1 or even just the Intel one, this dock makes a lot of sense because it can expand the connectivity of your machine and it makes things super easy. For instance, what you can simply do is plug everything already, leave them plugged into your system. And when you come back at the end of the day or when you're ready to link up your computer, it's just simply taking one cable, this Thunderbolt 3 cable, and linking this back up to your system, which makes it super convenient and easy. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is power this on. We're gonna link this up to my Mac Studio and let's run a quick speed test on this. All right, I'm gonna plug this in now and you're gonna start to hear the fan running on. So you definitely hear the fan running. It's not like a super high pitch sound or anything, but you do hear the fan running inside. And the fan is a little bit louder than my Mac Studio, which I think is already something that I can hear. So one more thing I want to mention about this dock is that even if you shut down your computer or put your computer to sleep, as long as the dock is being powered on by the power adapter, it's still going to run the fan in the dock itself. As I already mentioned, this is an early production unit. So Arico is aware of the fan pitch and they are changing it out to another fan. So I'm hoping that the unit that you guys would get would definitely run much more silence than the one that I have. But just something to keep in mind, the fan will always constantly run and there is no power button on the dock that you can just pretty much shut the dock off or anything like that. The only way to do that is to pretty much disconnect the dock from the power supply or the power brick that comes with it. Now let's run a speed test with the NVMe inside this dock. I'm currently using Blackmagic this speed test and I will target the NVMe that I have. This is the one that I have used in my other test before, is the one that I've used in the external enclosure and I just moved this over to this dock. It has been working just fine. It links up right away. So we're gonna do that and we'll start the test. So far right now, we're able to get close to 1400 megabytes per second write or 1.4 gigabyte per second write. And as far as read go, we're getting around 2.8 gigabytes per second or 2,800 megabytes per second, which overall I think for a Thunderbolt 3 dock, this is not bad at all. You can definitely expand the storage capability. One thing to just remember too, is that if you have a dock like this and you have an NVMe on inside and you don't take this dock with you everywhere you go, well, obviously what you have stored on that NVMe, it's only gonna be accessible when you link up to the dock again. So if you're on the road a lot, if you use a laptop, this may be something that you wanna consider having maybe a portable one that you can carry with you instead that are bus power. This way you're not so reliant on the dog. So those are just things to think about. I'm gonna stop this test for the time being. 
And like I mentioned before, I've tested off camera already, linking it up to two external 4K displays running at 60 hertz without any problem whatsoever. I've also run the calibration, both software and hardware calibration on those displays. For example, I linked this up to BenQ SW and they work just fine without any issue. So if you're considering a dock for a system and you want to have, for instance, an NVMe built into it, and possibly for a M.2 NGFF form factor, I think this is definitely the dock to consider. And like I said, this is a earlier production model that the fans running a little bit louder. They have replaced or changed the fan in the other ones that it will run much more silencer now, I'm hoping. So anyway, I hope that you find this review of this dock helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you're new. And remember, in our retrust.